Why would you want to learn how to work with concrete? Why would anyone want to learn how to work with concrete? Well, I mean, the first most compelling reason that I'll give you is that it's the most widely used construction material on the planet. <laughs> so right away, there's a vested interest for you here to learn about concrete, how to work with it, just a little bit more about it in general, because there's a surprisingly high number of ways that that's going to be useful for you in your life. You know, most of it's going to relate to in and around the home unless you choose to do this as a profession or if you choose to take it on as like a pretty serious hobby. The main advantage to you to learn about concrete is going to be just around the house. Little things around the house are going to add up to be big things because a lot of the times with concrete problems, they're relatively minor and honestly something you could probably do with very little instruction. Maybe even none at all. If you're a pretty handy person, you can probably just figure it out and do it. And we're talking fixing little imperfections in and around your home that would probably cost you a fair amount of money if you had to hire somebody in to take care of this stuff for you. A little bit of working knowledge goes a long way. The world of concrete is very interesting. It starts super basic. Sand, gravel, Portland cement, and water. Nothing too complicated going on there. You mix it around, you place it, you finish it, and then it hardens to full strength over approximately one month's time. So on the higher end of things, what is happening in the world of concrete technology these days is kind of like mind blowing. Like the latest stuff is self healing concrete, concrete, which is see through uh, concrete, which can collect or absorb and collect solar power. There's so much stuff out there happening now for concrete. And that's not even talking about just regular stuff. Like what used to be really strong concrete 20, 30, 50 years ago is still usefully strong now as well but we can make concrete orders of magnitude stronger than that with specialty mix designs and different admixtures that you put in there. There's so much stuff. You could start learning now and you'd never stop learning about concrete because there is so much that you could learn. You could get a working knowledge of the basics and then there's something you want to build. And in order to build that, you need to learn about a specialty aggregate that you need to use or a specialty admixture like a polymer or a water reducer or some sort of pigmentation because you have a specific color that you're desiring for this. All of those are going to lead you down rabbit holes which are going to open up whole worlds for you in terms of like concrete color. Like, oh, you want to add color. Holy cow, there's so many different ways. You could add it integrally. You could paint it after the fact. You could use a color hardener. You could use so many different things and they're all going to give you very distinctly different finished effects. You know, there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do with concrete. You know, we're talking garden decor and planters and statues and stuff like that. And that's pretty neat. Like, let's say you like this guy. This is my experience. I make a lot of stuff like this. Some people love this stuff. Some people wouldn't take it if it was free and, you know, to each their own. Let's say you love this and you totally want it. Well, if you didn't build it yourself, I would have no idea where you would buy something like that. So there's an advantage to learning how to work with concrete right there is you open up some new doors to your creative side and you can explore sculpture art or all kinds of different fun things. You can buy stuff that's not readily available on the market. So aside from being fun and some crafty, neat projects that you can work on, primarily the thing that you can do with a working knowledge of concrete is save money around your home. And, you know, I talked earlier about like, oh, you can make a small repair and not hire somebody. Sure, there's that. But there's also things like, let's say you had a working knowledge of concrete. You would recognize something like cracks as a deficiency, which could become a problem over time, especially if they're allowing water ingression. Like if you've got a big crack in your foundation or in your sidewalk adjacent to your foundation and it sinks and now it's pooling and collecting water every time it rains, that for sure is going to be undermining that concrete and causing all sorts of potential additional problems. When I see that with my working knowledge of concrete, I go, oh, look, I got a crack here. I'll, I better seal that up. I grab my concrete urethane and I seal it up and I don't have a problem there anymore. 
because I knew what to do. It cost me $5 for a tube of urethane or maybe I had one left over from the last crack I fixed. So the point here is that just a little bit of knowledge here saved me a lot of heartache in the future. Maybe you don't know enough about concrete to even notice that there was a problem there or would think that, you know, this water is tracking down. It might be undermining and causing some sort of damage to your foundation or something like that. You don't want to find out about a problem like that, the point at which you've got, you know, water in your basement or a collapsing foundation wall or something terrible like that. And you would avoid it all with working knowledge of concrete, how it works, what it's supposed to do, what's considered a deficiency, how do you fix it when something like that happens. These are all very attainable goals, not something that like, oh, you need 50 years of experience. Yeah, you definitely need 50 years of experience if you want to take on like, you know, the, the big concrete project. You want to pour yourself some huge stamp concrete driveway or something like that, you know, leave that to the pros. They might make it look easy, but it's hard work, believe me. So you want to make your projects attainable, at least at first. Give yourself a reasonable starting point and you can grow this skill over time and there's no high end to how much you can grow it. You could grow it into just really useful stuff around the house. Maybe you do take on a bigger project one day around the home instead of hiring it out. Maybe it even grows into a career of some kind, you know. If you start making stuff like this and you have people over, they're going to be like, could I buy some of these? I really like this stuff. And, you know, that kind of thing happens a lot. And even if you don't want to be a business, you might just do that. Okay, all of a sudden you started a business accidentally. That kind of thing can happen too. So aside from, you know, the average crack repair, you might also be able to do repairs around your home, like fixing, you know, uh, you've got one step that's out of level. You could kind of, you know, pour a repair and parge that so that you could level it up or you could look at, resurfacing some old spalling concrete that's kind of failing on the surface level. There's a lot of like that mid-level project that you can take on as well once you've got a couple of skills, a couple of practice, se practice sessions under your belt, and then you can take on some bigger repairs. And again, these are things that would be appreciable that if you're going to have to hire a professional to come and do them for you. A project example I can give you is I needed a hot tub pad. A hot tub pad, it's one of these awkwardly sized projects when you make it out of concrete because it's kind of too much to mix on site yourself. So you really want to get some ready mix and have a truck deliver it, but it's actually not that much for ready mix. You're going to pay as much in underage charges as you are for the actual concrete that you're using unless you have something else going on around your home where you could use a couple of yards of concrete as well. And so it kind of ends up costing more than it should for a concrete hot tub pad. So what I did is I built a concrete collar. So instead of the whole pad, I just built an eight inch wide collar around the outside of the finished dimensions of the uh, concrete pad that I wanted. I poured it four inches thick, put a little bit of steel in there, nothing overkill. And then for the inside, I just had some free cycled landscaping stones, you know, two foot by two foot pavers. If you look, you'll find stuff like that all over the place. People just want to get rid of it. They're not even charging for it. I picked up a load of those. We leveled the ground, dropped them in. And that, I think we had that for eight years and many years through freeze and thaw cycles. It had hot tubs on it. It still looks fine to this day. And I'm sure I didn't spend more than 50, $75 for the entire thing, which is a much better deal than a thousand or two for a concrete one. So I just put concrete around the outside. It encased the landscaping stones so they couldn't move around. It basically was perfect. There's nowhere for them to go. They settled a little bit over time, but really hardly, hardly at all. It's still serviceable to, still to this day. Enough about my hot tub. Do you know where else you can really save a lot of money with some concrete knowledge? talking the talk with contractors. There's going to be some stuff that you should not take on yourself as a, you know, concrete enthusiast or concrete hobbyist. Like I said earlier, pouring your own big stamp concrete driveway. Definitely leave that to the professionals. But you know where you can save yourself a lot of money? I'll give you an example here. Uh, somebody asked me to come over. They were having a big stamp concrete driveway installed and they had some concerns and I was friendly with them. So I just popped over and I took a look at the job and wouldn't you know it, they're about to pour the concrete and there's no steel at all. And if you know anything about concrete, you know that it has a very, very high compressive strength, meaning it's very hard to crush it, but it has an extremely low tensile st strength, meaning it you could snap it. Like if you picked up a pencil, you could just break it. Concrete works the same way and it relies on the high tensile strength of steel embedded within the concrete to provide it the best of both worlds. And when you pour something like concrete, even thick, like six inches thick for a concrete driveway, 
If you don't have any steel at all, there's not a reasonable expectation that it will stay together. It will crack. The pieces will start to migrate. You're gonna, it's gonna be a disaster. And for how much you're spending on a job like that, like steel's not cheap, especially if you want some thicker steel, higher quality, a tight grid spacing, you're gonna spend a little bit of money on it, but it's gonna make the, that concrete driveway last 30 to 50 years versus five to 10 or maybe less if they have like a really poor mix design or sloppy workmanship. So a little bit of knowledge about concrete working, you know, bench top stuff, uh, you learn right away while well, you need steel within it. So even just with this rudimentary knowledge of concrete working, you could look at a driveway and go like, hey guys, I paid you a lot of money. Aren't you gonna put any steel in there? And if you say the words like, hey, concrete has no tensile strength, how is this gonna not crack and start to migrate over time? And they're just gonna kind of look at you and be like, ugh. Oh, what, you want steel? That's extra. I don't know. Like you, Contractors aren't all out there to rip you off. Some of them might not know themselves. There's a lot of contractors out there who overstep. They don't know when to say no to a job offered to them. They don't respect limitations of their skill set, things like that. So it's not even always a malicious intent. Sometimes it's just they didn't know any better. You as the homeowner, the onus of responsibility is on you. You got to protect your interests here. We're talking about your home and huge amounts of money. Like, what do you think a giant stamp concrete driveway costs these days? I bet you it's a bundle. So if you're going to do it, you're going to want to do it one time. You're going to want to be able to communicate with that contractor in a knowledgeable way. You're going to want to be able to speak to them in such a way that they recognize that you're maybe not an authority on this subject, but you have a working knowledge. You have a conversational knowledge of what's happening here, and it's enough to protect your interests. It's a very important thing. And a huge way that you could potentially save a ton of money by learning a little bit about how to work with concrete. Sidewalks, driveways, chimneys and tuck pointing and foundations and there's so much stuff from very very little to very very big that you could benefit from knowing more about and we're not even always saying to do the work yourself sometimes it's just so that you can be more informed about dealing with a contractor or just assessing how severe a problem is. You know, if I walk up to my foundation wall and I go, oh look, there's 35 major cracks and they've opened up to an inch wide each and there's water pouring in out of each of them. It's like, hmm, I have a very severe problem here. Again, working knowledge of concrete. I don't think it's a good idea for the average homeowner to try to do something like stem an active leak in a cracked foundation or anything like that. But I would want to be as knowledgeable as possible because there's very likely the potential that you might have noticed something earlier before it developed into this serious catastrophe that you see now where you could have prevented it. Cracks on the outside of your home could have been fixed with a urethane to prevent water ingression and prevent this problem from getting worse. And again, a little bit of a skilled eye would notice that somebody who's never thought of concrete or worked with it a day in their life is not going to notice it. They're not going to appreciate finer details of little things happening that you're going to notice when you have an eye that you've, you've developed with experience. So the best thing about learning how to work with concrete, it's cheap, literally cheap by the ton. So buy a bucket, buy a bag of concrete, buy a trowel, mix them together, make something, just try it out. You really can't go wrong because you're only risking a few dollars at a time here. And the skills that you're going to be learning from every single trial, error, failure that you have, success is best of all, you're going to learn so much, especially in the beginning, even a small amount of effort invested from yourself to learn this very interesting, very appealing hobby, which has all sorts of potential fun, interesting, artistic benefits, could also help you out along, uh, along the lines of maintaining your home and protecting your, the, the investment that you've made in your home. Maybe one day you could develop it into a, you know, more than a hobby, turn it into some kind of business. There's a lot of compelling reasons to learn how to work with concrete. I hope you found this helpful. Please like and subscribe.